the NFL stands for not for long. Set Sharga and Armstead. Roll out. Walker still running out. Looks to the left. Wide open. Thompson touchdown. Colin Thompson with the touchdown. There was nobody within 20 yards. What of a catch off the bobble. Colin Thompson scoops it up. Lofting corner of the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. The first NFL touch for Colin Thompson is a score. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Colin Thompson Show. A little food, drinks, football, too, I guess. Everything's going over food, drinks, football. That's what we're doing here at Not For Long Media. It's always been food, drinks, football. We might as well just call it that. I'm Colin Thompson, my partner in crime, producer and do-it-all man for Not For Long Media, Jack Connell. Jack, how you doing today, buddy? Doing good. Doing good. We're in the midst of the NFL season. I think it's safe to say we're officially past the halfway point for at least the regular season. So Okay. Things just continue to shift in the full gear here as we approach the postseason. What's the topic on the Ross Tucker podcast today? Today we had Ray Davis, Buffalo Bills running back on, talking about his background, and then we also recap the trade deadline from yesterday. Where did he go to college, Jack? Can see if you can name all three. Temple Van D, Kentucky. Wow. Wow. Very good, Jack. Temple tough. Yeah. Ray Davis, I called his games. When he was at, with Jeff Collins, I forget what years. Probably played five, six years in college. Great player. I texted Joe Brady the, the second they drafted him. I just said duo. Everyone's like, what's duo? Duo is the downhill run, which is double teams between the tight ends, the tackles, the guards, the centers, and the same thing on the backside. It's just a bunch of double teams. We're not going to block the corner. The receiver is going to come down or the tight end is going to come down, depending on the personnel, and block everybody inside of the corner. We're going to hit it in the A-gap. Then the B gap, then the C gap, then the D gap. And if it gets to the corner, you got to make the corner miss. He's the worst tackler on the team, theoretically. Um, so that's duo, the famous play that Le'Veon Bell used to do, where he'd kind of fart around in the backfield and then hit it 100 miles an hour. That's duo. Ray Davis, uh, he's having a lot of success with that. That's why you don't pay running backs, Jack, which sucks for the running backs, because you can draft a guy. Now these guys in college have been playing for five, six years. So you can get a season back. Uh, looking to have success right away. Excuse me, Jack. Uh, success right away. And a guy like Ray, who's a really good player. So that's awesome. Special shout out to our friends at the original Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com, shipping fudge and sweet treats around the country. You know the drill. They'll ship right to your house. And uh, they've been sponsoring. They've been with us here since day one. They're also a sponsor of our new show, Food Drinks Football. Uh, and that's been a blast. Uh, Jack, what's your favorite part of Food Drinks Football? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> everything i'm just here so i don't get fined yeah uh it's been a blast so far i appreciate everybody tuning in again they're sponsoring us here at colin thompson show not for long media and food drinks football go support someone who supports us and that's the original fudge kitchen fudgekitchens.com yeah it's uh it's been a blast jack uh i guess i'll talk through the kelly's episode uh, kelly's episode was an absolute blast we went up there um uh, this past summer with my uncles as you saw my dad and we just had a ball man we shot everything in one day we sat down for interviews with owners we got to know patrons we got to know you know hostesses and and bartenders and we got a tour of the kitchen and downstairs they have an awesome private room and we got the history of the place it's a place that gives you a hug it's old school bar vibes where you know the bartenders are dressed with collared shirts on and everybody's matching and it's you know the the, the iris theme with the greens and the yellows and the oranges and you know the, sh the shillelagh clubs right down the street and so it's just got this really cool pageantry feel to it as a bar open breakfast lunch and dinner great menu creative menu and fun uh they give you plenty of options so we love kelly's we love their staff and we can't thank them enough for having us Again, brought to you by the original Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com, shipping fudge and sweet trees across the country. All right, Jack, let's get into the trade deadline, man. Uh, I'll let you start first. Anything that jumps out to you as we as we see, not just jumps out, but like what's the fit? Why is it a great fit? And how does it make the team better? Yeah, I would say the couple that really stand out to me, I mean, it's the big ones. I think Marshawn Lattimore. To watch that, I just think it's always really fun and fascinating to see these teams that are on the upswing and have all of these assets to spend, spend them. I, I think Marshall Lattimore is cost controlled for three seasons. I don't know what his exact cap hit is, but 
I mean, that's great for Washington to get. I mean, they desperately needed help on the outside at corner. So to get somebody like Lattimore, who's, I think, one of the best corners in the NFL for the last few years, for a th- basically a third and a fourth round pick, I think that's tremendous value for them. And I think that's a great move by the commanders. And I think it's really going to be helping them down the stretch, especially if that defense already being strong up front as it is. Granted, they lost Jonathan Allen, but still, they're shaping yeah. up to be strong for long haul. It's not like he's a one-year guy. I think Mike Williams to Pittsburgh is a really great get by them. They desperately need a wide receiver. They kind of had unfortunate luck. Like they were in on Ayuk. Ayuk stays. They had a deal in place for Christian Kirk. Christian Kirk breaks his collarbone or whatever he did. So they have Mike Williams, who's still a great guy. I mean, that's crazy to think that like it's they Jets gave him however much money. And after half a season, he's gone, which it makes sense because they got Devonta Adams, but that's just still always wild to say. And I think he's a great possession guy for Russell Wilson, who's Look great in that offense, incredible resurgence. Like he's not as I don't think he's good as Seattle, Russell Wilson, obviously, but he looks like a completely different guy than he did in Denver. And that team has really been fun to watch. And then they added another Preston Smith off the edge from Green Bay, which is I think a pretty good move by them. He's great, but they've got a lot of dudes as is off the edge. So I wasn't really expecting that, but I think it's still a great move. So those are the couple that stood out to me. The team that won the trade deadline for me was the Minnesota Vikings going after Cam Robinson. He's a plug-and-play guy, former first-round pick, can play the game at a high level. He's played a ton for the Jags. He goes from the Jaguars, who are a meddling team at the moment, to the Vikings and springs right into national TV. And Kevin O'Connell runs right the right behind him, first play of the game. And he forklifts the D-end out, and they skirt up inside. So love that move for them. I also love a move like Preston Smith going to the Steelers for a seventh-round pick. He wasn't getting the reps he was getting. They're trying to develop younger players with the Steelers. He's a stud player that played opposite of Zadarius Smith back in the day when they played together. So the rich got richer when it comes to outside linebackers with Highsmith and Watt uh, in Pittsburgh. I love Tredarius White going to the Ravens. They've been struggling with depth. They've been struggling with health. Uh, You know, they really only gave up a seventh round pick next year for him realistically. So that's a depth player who's got experience that done it at a high level. Mike Williams to Steelers. I like that. It's a good match. Obviously, Lattimore, the depth, the, the, the length, the size, the experience, and the contract, all interesting stuff to me. Um, and I think the Deontay Johnson move to the Ravens is a nice one as well. Really rounds out that option. So Vikings, Ravens, the two teams for me that made really good moves to kind of round out their team. All right, Jack, moving on from the trade deadline. Obviously, Zadarius Smith, first off, I mean, he's the big home run get, right? Like, I, I'm trying to provide some some conversation around things that maybe aren't the obvious. Um, Zadarius Smith's an absolute monster, three-time pro bowler, guy's a freak, great player, and he's going to round out their roster. Detroit is the best roster in the NFL. What the coordinators, with how they're going about their business, uh, stupid impressive, and they're on a – a major level. Uh, another guy, Roy Robertson Harris, who played uh, in Chicago, got a big ticket to Jacksonville. They signed him to an extension, I believe. And then he goes to Seattle for a six round pick. He's a good player. Um, he was really good when I was there. I believe he's at a UTEP. He's older right now. I'm seven years you know, into the NFL, eight years from when I played with him. So uh, a really good player. Let's see what else is going on around the league, Jack. Let's talk about the birds, man. Um, Philadelphia Eagles, your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on these kicks and these points and this team defense is top 10 in the league, offense is top 10 in the league. They're making plays on special teams. They got a great kicker. They forced a fumble this week on punt. Your thoughts on the Eagles, kind of the this, this state of their franchise. Yeah, I mean, it's a continuous step in the right direction. It's, it's good and bad. Like, it's bad that some of these mistakes are happening. But the good is that typically in the past, these types of mistakes have killed them. They would have lost this game if it was, but they were able to play through it. And I think the play on the field has been great. I don't think the Saquon Barkley fumble was a fumble. I mean, it's, it's technically wild. That was not a fumble. The ground can't cause a fumble now or wasn't on the ground. It was the ground. Yeah. I'm saying it it shouldn't have been a fumble. He was touched. He was when he, got scraped on the ankle, and then he touched on the back ankle, I believe it was, Fred Johnson or somebody. And with that, he slipped and fell, and when he fell, he fumbled the ball. So the letter of the law is because he got touched at the tackle, he's down. But I don't know what they – their maybe their determination was he didn't get touched, and because he slipped on that, he just wasn't downed. So that's why it was a fumble. I guess that's what their reasoning was. Anyways, yeah. 
they the ability to fight through that and still get the win, I think, is massive. The big red flag, is, I don't agree with it. It's worked for them sometimes, it works not, is the continuous aggression from Nick Sirianni. Because the biggest thing that you paid, you made Jake Elliott one of the highest paid kickers in football not that long ago. He is one of the best kickers in the NFL. And it's, so it's not like you're like, oh, well, we don't trust our kicker from this Ranger. This surge. like It's a guaranteed three points. I get sometimes a different swing, but the one was to go from go up 17 points to 18. And like that, you don't need that. Like you're not like it's it's a three score game one way or the other. And, and then the consequences, it's a 16 point game. It's a two touchdown game. So, and I, it's, I get it's understand it's part of his mantra, but like we're, I feel like we're on the very extreme end of what it used to be for these fourth down go for it situations. So I think fixing that is pretty much their big issue ahead. I think their free agency class this year is saving them. Uh, Zach Bond, what he's doing as a linebacker uh, for a team that really doesn't invest in linebackers is nothing short of impressive. I played against him in New Orleans. He was the on the ball, same linebacker versus like 22, 21, 12 personnel. He'd come up and, you know, I blocked him in several times and was stout and physical, but really not that big. Linebacker spot, though, he's looked comfy in the inside linebacker spot, making a bunch of plays. The guy's flying all around the field, super impressive. And then the running back spot. I mean, Saquon Barkley, I mean, he's the, the catch all, do everything right kind of guy for him. Like, let's dump it to him in the flat, have him make three guys miss and jump over a guy backwards. I mean, that's the type of season that he's having. If it wasn't for the tush push, he'd probably have another five or six touchdowns. I think short yardage wise, another issue for the Eagles. How are we figuring that out? Like the tush push got stopped. It's running at an 80 plus percent clip. If you have a play that runs at 80 plus percent in the NFL or anything in life, anything, any work, you should do that. So that will stay there. They'll add a wrinkle on that. Expect that to come. They get the foot. They threw the football to the fullback in the flat. When's the last time that happened for the Philadelphia Eagles? So that's exciting. Thought they took a step back on a little thing, not a big thing, but Saquon, he would even say it late in the game. They're trying to put the game away. He catches the ball or he runs the ball and he and he runs it out of bounds to make it second and one. Instead of going for the first down, third down, they get stuffed. They go to fourth down, they run a little rollout pass, they get stuffed on fourth and inches. To me, like end the game, cut it up, don't run out of bounds. Like that's a cultural thing. And then knowing, like, okay, not to be the college meathead, but it's like, okay, when do I run out of bounds? When do I don't run out of bounds? Um, it's an interesting situation. And and that team is getting better. This weekend was scary, kind of, but I thought they've been trending up and they kind of flattened out this week against a Jacksonville team. But I mean, listen, the Eagles moving forward, who do they got on the schedule? We'll play that game a little bit, Jack. This game, uh, they got uh, Cowboys, obviously. The quarterback situation is brutal there. Then they have a short week. They come home. Washington, Thursday night football. What a great game that's going to be. I mean, that's a home run Thursday night game. Then they head out to L.A. Then they head to Baltimore. Carolina's at home. Pittsburgh, Washington, Dallas, and the Giants. So, yeah, man, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, always great topic for us to talk about. A lot of our listeners are in there, but. You know, at the end of the day, like, what are they doing to continue to separate themselves and move in the right direction? Do they look like the Detroit Lions, Jack, when you watch them? No, just because the, the, the Lions are machine. Like, the Lions, like, you went in, like, Green Bay, like, that was going to be a tough, contentious game. The two best teams, arguably, in the NFC North, and they steamrolled Green Bay in Lambeau. Like, there was no, I mean, Jordan Love sure was a little banged up, but they steamrolled them. And, if you put records aside, like it's you got to give the respect to Kansas City because they're undefeated. They've won 14 straight. They're back back Super Bowl champs. But if you remove all previous history about these teams, you put them head to head. I think the Lions are a much better team than them. And that's not bad against the Chiefs. I would still say at worst, the Chiefs are the second best team in football. They are the best team in the AFC by far. I just think the Lions are that good. Uh, it's yeah. just I can't point out a weak spot on that team. Both teams, great GMs, great owners. Colin Cowards are the best. Sorry for the tech, 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 Jesus. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Holy cow. Colin Cowards has the best, though. He really does. He always has. Who's the owner? Who's the GM? Who's the quarterback? Right? Who's the head coach? Um, those two franchises have it all. How about Jared Goff? Rich Gannon, by the way, if anybody's listening for something other than our wonderful show with our millions and millions and millions of downloads that we get, <laughs> um, listen to Rich Gannon on Sirius XM. He's on at noon on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. But listen to him on Mondays. You want some entertainment? You want some Philly guy, St. Joe's Prep, played at Delaware. You want someone who 
calls it how it is and calls people out and doesn't give the frou-frou answer, what I would love to give, but I just can't for what the future holds. He absolutely rips people, Jack. Rich Gannon, and if you miss anything on Sirius app, you can go back and literally search his name and it comes up and watch. Listen to his Monday show. It's actually nice when you go back and listen. It's like podcast form. They cut out the commercials. You can rip through some serious shows if you need something to listen to. Listen to Rich. He's incredible. He, first off, he gives you great knowledge that you can understand as a fan, not just from a, co- a player's perspective or from a coach's perspective. He really breaks it down. And he lays into people. And he talks about Jared Goff. He gives some ridiculous stat. I, I can't even write them all down. I try to write them down for my show on Sirius, but our show. And it's like stupid. Like he's got two times as amount of touchdown throws in the last six weeks as he has incompletions, like something ridiculous. Um, Ben Johnson, he'll be a head coach for sure. Uh, Their DC, he'll be a head coach for sure. He's a great guy. He's worked his way up from a first round pick back into the coaching world. Um, So yeah, Kansas city, Matt Nagy. So you're going to get another shot, right? Like, does he get another opportunity? He did some good things there in Chicago early on, and then it fizzled out. And then Spags, like, hmm, when's does he? I don't even think he wants a job. But if he wanted a job, he would get one tomorrow. Um, Jersey Shore guy, maybe go back to the Giants, restore, go back to North Jersey, Jack. What do you think about that, Jackie Poo? Well, here's what I think. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Figure we'll it out. See. The best one I call Jack, everybody. Hey, Jack, what do we got going on? Uh, nothing. And then he rips it for like 15 minutes of what we got going on. <laughs> That's my favorite it's, Jackism. What's what's your favorite ism of me? Interesting. What is what is a good what's one the stuff you call on the media coming back? Like, oh, Colin did it again. I mean, you're excessive. I had a friend who doesn't even listen to the show send me one of your typos that he just stumbled upon on Instagram in a comment section. Yeah, the two and the two. I know I screwed that up. I screwed yeah. that up and I noticed it and it was too late. What my excessive yeah. amount of typos? Is that what it is? <laughs> yes, that's your it's I I think it's an art now to be able to I don't know if you speak the text or if you're just that bad of a typer at times, but being yeah. able to decipher your texts, it's, it's you're great with my text. You get my text because I'm just like firing and you know what I but sometimes yeah. when I fire away on like Instagram and I, I couldn't delete it. I couldn't delete it. I'm like, what the heck? I've gotten better. My friend Angela, who's a frequent listener of the show, and George. But George doesn't make fun of me because he's actually my friend Angela, who's one of my best friends in the world. She makes fun of me. And she's right. I've never been strong with it. I was that kid, Jack. You know, and I I, I could work on it, right? I could read more and all that. But I'm ripping and running, Jack. I'm one of those ripping runners. You know, that's why I have you by my side to help me. You're the man. But I was one of those kids, Jack, at Cold Spring Elementary School in Doolestown, Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Ever heard of it? And... They would pull me out of class to get the knock on the door. English would start, right? You know, top two o'clock, you know, the thing, first off, God bless teachers. Okay. God bless them. All day long, they got to put up with people like us in there, leaning back on our seats, you know, eating in class, whatever I was doing, not paying attention. I mean, every day for, for 18 years, it was counting down when's recess, lunch, and when are we getting out of here? Right. So maybe I, maybe I should have paid attention more, but. Jack be like, all right, English starts at noon. All of a sudden, (laughs) oh, shit. Here comes Miss Penelope. And she'd be like, Colin, it's time. I'm like, oh, God. And they would pull me out, and I would go read with this special teacher. And I can read. Obviously, I can talk. I can read. But my reading comprehension and my pen to paper sometimes, spelling, is not the strongest. I'm getting that quote, just I can read. I can read. I think I can. But man, did you sweat in class when they'd ask you, Jack, like, hey, you got to read this to the class out loud, chapter one? No, I was in the gifted group. I was one of the, I never had my worst, every class except one in high school. No, I think even that one too. I finished with a beer better in high school. My worst class ever was a sculpt, was sculpture. And I think I might have been like a 78. That checks out. If George is listening. I it was that checks out. RT Jack, I, not the artsiest. It was the funny. I can't say who it was. I can't. It's, it's but like I had to do a final project, and it was I forget what it was. It was like you had to use things you found in nature for a project to like create symbolism. And I put off until the last day, and I just was like, I found a piece of cardboard, and I saw a stick, like a, just like a 
like you found it outside. And I just super glued it to the piece of cardboard and I drew the piece of cardboard as a road. I was a senior in high school at the time, <laughs> by the way, to shape this <laughs> into perspective or junior. And I just did that and I had paper and I handed it in and I'm like, oh yeah, it's uh industrialism covering up nature. I got like a 75 on it. Hey, you got 75, not bad. But like you got these kids are spending like three full days on like these giant robotic sculptures made out of soup cans yeah. and all this stuff. It was there should be crazy. something in class where like you do it for like a month and if like you're really struggling with it, like they tap you on the shoulder and like, hey, go now. You gotta do double math, right? If you're really strong in math, let's double you down on it so then you can advance. Cause it's like there were some courses I took in college. I'm like, guy, hey, hey, this ain't working. You know what I'm saying? Like calc. Like I'm like, this is not me. Is it? I I business cal. I had that was my worst class I ever took was business calc at community yeah. college. It was so hard. I had a friend, shout out Eddie, who at the time worked at NASA and was a prof a, a TA in calculus at Purdue. Helped me with my homework, and I barely passed. Yeah. Yeah, man. Now it's real. It's real. This <laughs> suffers real. You're, hey, tell Jay Brad or your buddy from Susquehanna or one of your other little pallies who's chirping me. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'll sound like an ass. But, yeah, appreciate their support. Thanks for following me on Instagram. I'm getting better. My two and two and my there, there, and there are better. So doing better. I'm doing better, and that's all you can do. We're doing better as a world. Jack, thanks for joining the show. Tell Susquehanna or Jay Brad I said what's up. And uh, I appreciate your support, everybody. Again, thanks to our friends over at the original Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com. And then also thanks to our friends at Kelly's, guys. Check out Food Drinks Football, our new show. Share it, rate it, subscribe, all that stuff. It, it helps us. It helps Jack. helps all our team. I'm not making any money. I'm pouring it. I'm, I'm pushing it out. I'm getting our, to our team some cash. Thanks, guys. Hope everyone has an awesome rest of the week.